All right, we are back for another Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? Can you believe this is our last Friday wrap up of 2022? What an amazing year. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you for making me better each and every week and being just a good dude. So thank you so much. Thank you, man. It's been a wild ride. And I love for, for, a, for you, the viewer who's been with us all year, what a blessing you've been, Michael, that you've literally have always been six to eight to 12 weeks ahead of the trend and being able to call these markets. And so let's get right into it. Uh, today is for December the 30th, 2022, <laughs> the last Friday of the year. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about home prices in case Schiller. What did you yep. see this week? Yeah, so we got two great home price uh, reports this week. I do want to remind people. So first off, it's Case Shiller, FHFA. Those are the two reports. Let's never forget that both of these reports are old, right? This is December we're talking, and we're talking about October data. So let's just not get it twisted. Uh, Case Shiller uh, did show another price decline for uh, the country, uh, down 0.3% month on month. Uh, it's the fourth negative month in a row. That said, peak to trough, we're down 3.4%, I believe. However, year on year, we're still up basically 10%. So again, we did have that little bump after you know rates went up, iBuyers, all of that stuff. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, as people will know, I have been calling for no negative year on year price, uh, prices in 2022. I believe that will be correct, but we will see uh, shortly. Uh, but, you know, for 2023, which we will get to at the end of this video, we'll see if I've changed my tune. FHFA, the second price uh, report that came out this week, it's very interesting. So last month, which would have been September, Case Shiller came out with a record-setting price decline. I want to say it was like 1.8%. Month on month, that is like unheard of. FHFA came out and said, you know what? We actually saw a positive price growth. So you got to remember Case Shiller kind of dominated by the coast, FHFA kind of more middle of the country. But again, I do want to remind you that FHFA said prices went up 0.1% when Zillow said things went down. This month, Zillow went down 0.3%. FHFA said zero. Last thing to talk about prices is none of this matters for anybody watching this. You need to be watching your buy box, your area. If you're in San Francisco, you have felt a lot of pain. If you are in Cleveland or Detroit or somewhere else, probably not. If you're in Florida, prices are up. So again, know your buy box, know your area. We talk nationally because it's something I've been looking at for 30 years. It's fun to kind of battle these other economists. Uh, but again, please, if you're a local investor, know your area, your buy box, your inventory, your, your listing. So again, do the work. Do the work. Know your buy box, 100%, something we talk about every single week. Um, also, too, and I just want to comment, I think for the obvious, for you, the listener, for you, the viewer, I mean, you know this, we've seen it. If you're in the market, you're looking, you've noticed prices are softening in certain price ranges. And again, it's all about locations. It's all about specific product types. And also, too, just comment a little bit about the high end. I know you talked about this last week, and you talked about yeah. the white collar recession, versus, you know, below the median first time buyers, maybe just comment to that from last week, because I think that's important to connect the dots. Yeah. So there is no housing market. There's not even really a housing market for your area. We'll just say San Francisco again, just to pick a city at random. I think there's three markets inside of San Francisco or Cleveland or Miami, for example, there's luxury. And I define luxury as being two X, whatever your median is. That market is dead. The, that market is, it's a luxury market. And what happens in the face of a recession? What happens in the face of stocks dropping out, out of bed? Luxury buyers already have a home. It's a, it's a nice to have. They're not going to go buy another one. If they're scared, they're not buying. That market is dead. It's dead across the country. Then there's the move up market, which I think has been most distorted by the fact that the Fed broke housing. You're not selling and you're not buying. The move up buyer is two sales dead. Uh, and then there's first-time home buyers. I think there's life in first-time home buyers. If 
if you're like me and you're on my channel and you follow the hub, which comes out every Monday, you know that I have two active flips. Uh, they were both purchased for right around 190 grand on average, and they were both be sold for 300 grand on average. And my median's 400. So even after a full remodel, they're going to be 75% or thereabouts of area median prices. So if you're playing there, I think you're safe. But that said, I could be wrong. And if I lose money, everybody will know it because we talk about it every week during our hub call, which you are a part of. So I think there are three markets in every market. Very interesting. Thank you for explaining that, breaking it down. Let's continue. Let's talk about pending home sales. What did you see this week and thoughts as we end the year? Yeah. So pending home sales is the last housing statistic for the year. Uh, it, expectations coming into the report were negative five. It actually came out negative four. Pending home sales are down. The market is down. Inventory is down. It's just, uh, to me, the housing market ends the year frozen, right? Where I, you know, we did uh, existing home sales. We talked about last week, 4.09. I called 4.08. It was really close. Certainly better than all the experts. And I think it was just a frozen market. Uh, we'll talk about next year in a little bit, but uh, I think we need to wrap up 2022 first. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's continue. Let's talk about the year in review. Just your thoughts, your insights as you look back over 2022. What are some of the insights you have? Maybe some ahas, maybe some monumental shifts. And yeah. of course, stay tuned for everybody. You're watching this because we're going to talk about opportunity. We're going to talk about 2023. But before we do, Michael, let's talk about 2022. What did you see? What were some of your insights this year? Yeah, the beauty is you and I have conversations every week so people can go back and watch this. If you were to pull up our interviews from January and February, it was it was still the easiest time to make money. We were still, you know, there were still people flipping stuff uh, and making money. I wasn't. I had already gotten out. I was already raising dry powder and I shared that. But Q1 2022, generally speaking, still a great market. Right? The Fed didn't start raising rates meaningfully until after Q1. Then what we saw for six months is the Fed did something it's never done. It has never raised rates this fast on a percentage basis. We went from zero to 4% funds rate in six or seven months. Crazy fast. That broke housing. Uh, we talked about the mortgage market dropping. I called 75%. It's down 84%. So even my crazy call of 75% wasn't crazy enough. I talked about housing transactions going sub 4 million long before anybody else and we're there. So um, I call 2022 the year of transition. It hurt a lot of people. That pivot, that speed caught a lot of people by, uh, by surprise. We saw June, the housing market stop when rates exceeded 6%. I talked to three or four real estate agents every week and they're like, dude, 6% was the number. Then we saw rates back up in August and some people blew out inventory and they saved themselves. Then we saw rates go to seven. And like, I remember when rates got over seven, I'm like, damn, when are these going to stop? Are we going to see eight, nine, 10? I mean, I remember thinking that going, man, if we get to 10%, it's all over. It's Armageddon. And then, oh, by the way, they came back. I now think seven or now think eight, nine, 10 is off the table. I don't think we go there, but there was a month a window where I was like, these people calling 10% mortgages, they could be right. What the hell? So 2022 was wild. Then we end up the year kind of where I expected 4 million transactions. Prices did not crash. Everybody said they would. Um, you were right yeah. there too, by the way. I want to say for you watching, again, for the, the person who's been watching for the last year, the last year and a half, Michael called this and literally... I would say on a regular basis, two or three times a week, you would call out the, these these crash you crash dummies, the crash bros, people that were basically just headlining, making crash videos every day. Talk to that as you're as you're explaining this and continue. Yeah, the, the good news is uh, they they have a the crash bros have a script. It's always 20, 30, 35 percent, and it's always wait six months. They don't change their script. It's always wait six more months. The next crash bros are going to talk about is unemployment. 
They're going to say stupid things about unemployment doubling or tripling or whatever it is. All of these forced sales, folks, it's not coming. Uh, I just did an interview with Lance Lambert, who's a housing expert from Fortune magazine. Uh, it'll be up on my channel on, on today, Friday. And um, it it talks about what could cause inventory to spike. We talk about pricing in video number two, what a 10% crash would mean, what a 20% crash would mean. We go back and look at history. You know, Lance Lambert's got no skin in the game. He makes no predictions. He talks to iBuyers. He talks to Ivy Zellman, John Burns. He talks to all the heavyweights. And he shares uh, his thoughts on what's coming. So, um, yeah, the crash, bro the crash bros are out for themselves. They're only trying to help themselves. They're making hundreds of thousands of dollars producing the same garbage. But I want to give them credit. They're feeding a need. There are people that want permission to do nothing. And Ty, I'll never give you permission to do nothing. I believe the answer is in doing the work. It's why I wear this hat. Uh, I believe there are great deals out there. I am living proof. I did two deals in the last eight weeks, and I'm going to report them on my channel every Monday, what's going on, good or bad. And um, yeah, I'm excited about 2023, which we'll get into in a minute. Yeah. And I got to say, too, that um, something you mentioned, there was a time and it felt like all hell was breaking loose in the market during the summer. And I had several friends, people that were close to me that were in the deep water dealing with how do I deal with this? And because of your guidance and, you know, I said I said this on stage. But again, for those of you that were not at some of the Fresno events, Michael Zuber is my secret weapon. And I sincerely mean that, that literally, you know, you, you literally, you being able to see as the market was shifting or to see an opportunity for people. And we talked a lot about in the summer in July, August, like this is the time to clean your balance sheet. Yeah. If you, you can't get out. Bills, yeah. Get out. Yep. Get out. And like, so friends of mine, several friends of mine that were going through really tough times, they were able to dump the, the lose the losers, but also to press winners and pull out profits that allowed them to have dry powder and stabilize. And now, like you, they've got dry powder. They're now looking for opportunities yeah. and they're out of a tight situation. I had other friends too that honestly are still even right now trying to navigate how to get out of deals and oh. how to refinance or how can I burr this or can I, you yeah. know. And scrambling. It's just tough. It really is tough. So thank you, Michael, for being a blessing and being able to really see this market unfold. Let's continue. Let's talk about 2023, the next year to come. I know you're excited. Mm -hmm. We're all excited. Let's talk about opportunities. And specifically, what do you see in 2023? Yeah. So first off, the, when you talk about housing, you would be remiss if you don't talk about interest rates, right? We are the most levered business uh, in the country, uh, in the economy to interest rates. And I believe, as I've said many times, the Fed is going to get us to 5%. What does that mean? It means we have two more interest rate rises. We're going to get a quarter, in my opinion, February 1st, and a quarter March 16th. That'll take us to the range of 4.75 to 5%. And I believe at that point, the Fed is done. So the first thing to realize is I believe we are near the top of the Fed tightening. That is a good thing. Because what scared me last year that little window I talked about, 8, 9, 10% mortgages. I had no idea how high the Fed was going. Now I feel like I'm pretty certain at 5%. Second, I believe we are heading into a rolling economic recession. It's not going to be a quick down and a quick up. It's going to be 12 to 18 months in duration. It'll be shallow, but long. So what does that mean? That means, in my opinion, that mortgage rates will trend down slowly. Mortgage rates will be lower in July than January. They will be lower in December than July. Because as we get into the recession, we will be closer and closer to getting out of it. The Fed will ultimately cut rates, I believe, in 2024. But the bond market will be way ahead of them. So uh, we're almost to the top funds rate. I believe mortgage rates, generally speaking, trend down. Nothing crazy. We're not getting to 2% again. We're not getting to 3% again, but we're not going to be at 9% either. Now we have to talk about inventory. I think inventory and luxury, if you have ever wanted a luxury home, you're going to have your chance. 
get aggressive. Don't pay list price. Move up buyers, new homes, get aggressive. I have one of my experts, Anna Kelly, that comes on every Wednesday that got a new home from Lennar in San Antonio, Texas for 30% less than list price. Crazy. So if you find a seller, that a builder that wants out, go get aggressive. You're going to have the ability to do deals in the move up in luxury. And then that leaves first time home buyers. I believe when NAR, National Association of Realtors, reports January, February, March, April data of 2023, we are going to see that FHA, VA, and first time home buyers are starting to dominate the market. So if that's true, where am I playing? Well, guess what? I'm playing way below the median. I'm buying your 1960s, three bedroom, one bath fixers that are disgusting. Folks, go back on my channel. I have a, pl I have a playlist called walkthroughs. I just did a walkthrough of the most ugly and disgusting house. Check it out. I'll spend 40 or 50 grand. We'll see what happens after that. But uh, I think there is a safe place to play. I believe as a flipper, if you're buying disgusting, and you flip to the FHA buyer, I think that is a safe place to play. And I'm going to do that and document the whole story in 2023. And we'll see what happens. And then lastly, sub two, seller financing. I am not done growing my portfolio. I want more rentals. If you are an agent in Fresno, California, and you have Park Place or Boardwalk that's not selling, it's a luxury property, I want to talk to you about seller financing because I know. I can pay the seller's price and structure a deal where we all win. You, the agent, get paid. The seller gets their price, and I get cash flow. So I am ecstatic about next year um, for the market. But you've got to be you got to be nimble, and you got to protect yourself. So I think 2023 is going to be great because we're. It's not going to be a big pivot, right? Q1 was awesome. Q2 sucked. It's just going to be kind of a flat, boring market where. You're going to feel like you're stuck in the mud, but I uh, I can do a lot of things uh, in that kind of market. So I'm ecstatic. I love it. And I've got to wholeheartedly agree with you. We've been talking talking about it for a long time. Creative agents, people that are, you know, know how to do creative finance or investors who are proactive, that are looking at buy boxes, that are doing the work. This is the time to be successful. And obviously knowing your buy box, knowing your marketplaces, knowing what's going on, the difference between luxury to two, two times median, right? That's a great, very clear definition for any market that anybody can figure out. Yep. So good, Michael. So good. Any any other parting words as we close out 2022? Yeah. The last thing I want to mention, uh, actually, uh, you, you just because of the date, my course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, if you watch this on Friday the 30th, is still 320 bucks. It will be $399. It's going up $80. Bucks. My mentoring option is going up even more, uh, which I never talk about. Um, but that's because I added my mastermind. We did our first mastermind, which you brought the house down to end the meeting. It's all there. Um, it's If you buy it at $320, you get it. It's bonus collateral. Uh, but I knew that once I added that event, which cost me over ten grand to put on, uh, I was going to raise the price, and I'll do that uh, right around January 1st. So you got 24, maybe 48 hours to buy it at a stupid price. And if you do buy it, join the Facebook group. We'd love to have you introduce yourself, uh, have some fun. Absolutely. So folks, if you are considering, if you're on the fence, if you're looking for a program somewhere where you can actually learn the business, somewhere where you can be mentored, somewhere where you can be teach, where you can be learned, be taught, be coached, have access. Michael does a group call on, on Saturday mornings. That's awesome. All of his content, as well as I got to say, that event, that alone is worth the price of admission. Yeah. Like what Michael delivered. And not only that, I got to say, this was a rare event where the other speakers, in my opinion, like just blew it out of the water. Like yeah. the Cody and Christian yeah. and uh, the ADU guy and yeah, Omar Beth and Adrian. And Omar. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Oh, the whole entire event. I want to say it's probably a good solid six hours of content. Oh, it's six, six, seven hours of content. Yeah. And again, it was all Q&A, no PowerPoint. I tried something that had never been done that Gary V ended up copying. And we did an entire mastermind, no PowerPoint, not a single PowerPoint, all audience driven. It was awesome. Folks, do yourself a favor. Join the program. You can find it at 
one rental at a time.com one rental at a time.com. Michael, thank you for all that you share and do happy new year, brother. Looking forward to an, a strong 2023. Thank you. Dude, 2023 is good. 2022 was cool. It was all right. 2023 is going to be amazing. You and I are going to do some great stuff together. I love it. Thank you, Michael. Have a great weekend. Happy new year, everybody.